Okay, great. Uh, this is the uh, description of how to perform um, the hypothesis assignment example. Uh, but in reality, this can be used for any of uh, the writing assignments we're going to do in this class, and anytime you're developing a hypothesis for any class. These are probably the steps you can take. Um, we'll start off with the five steps that you're actually graded on, the things that I want to know, did you do this? And the first is, did you cl clearly state what your hypothesis is? Your hypothesis is going to be a statement about how you believe a phenomenon should occur in reality. It is not a question at all. Um, you will state, I hypothesize that, or I believe that. Uh, it's not a question. I shouldn't have trouble finding it. It is absolutely fine to literally write, I hypothesize that, dot, dot, dot. The next thing you have to do is you have to explain why you think it's true. Um, regardless of how clear your hypothesis is, you must state why you believe that your hypothesis is as you state it to be. Your third step is after you've described your hypothesis and you've explained why you believe your hypothesis is what it is, you have to describe to me how you're going to test this hypothesis. What is the experiment? What are the measures? What are the variables you're using to examine this hypothesis? You have to do this as clearly as possible. You must operationalize. In other words, you must define your variables. If you think that happy people are going to make more money, you need to describe how are you going to determine what makes someone happy or not. If you uh, And you need to determine how much, how are you going to measure money? Are we talking about income? Are we talking about amount of money in their wallets? Are we talking about their socioeconomic status? You must be as clear as possible. The goal here is to be able to have someone else read your method section, which is what, what the third step is, and to do exactly what you did as clearly as possible, having just read what you wrote. So it needs to be extremely clear. You then need to describe to me what your results are. This should be pretty simple because it's probably going to be what you hypothesize your results would be. I want you to make a graph. There's a separate video on that. I ask you to make graphs because visualizing data often helps people clarify what it is they're hypothesizing. It's not uncommon for people to hypothesize one thing and then show data differently. And so it's important to compare these two to make sure that you are actually understanding what it is you're predicting. And then the fifth is, why does what you found actually matter? Have a sentence or two description of, of why, uh, why this matters. If we look at our hypothesis example down below, we can see the following. Uh, the hypothesis starts off with, I believe that though people have a stereotype about women being worse at math and science disciplines as compared to men, this is probably only true when sex or gender are made very salient. Salient means when you're aware of one's sex or gender. Men and women probably don't differ at all on innate ability, and thus when sex or gender is not made salient, or made salient after the performance situation, they won't differ at all. So this first section here is my hypothesis. I seem to be hypothesizing that men and women don't differ when sex or gender is not made salient, but when sex or gender is made salient, the women will perform worse than men. When it is salient, women will prefer, perform worse than men because concerns about confirming the stereotype that women are bad at math will lead to decrements in working memory, and this will impair their performance. So this seems to be the description of why the hypothesis makes sense. I plan to have equal numbers of men and women participate in the study. All participants will take the same moderately difficult math tests with questions from the SATs and GREs. However, for half of the male and female participants, they will be asked to identify their sex prior to taking the exam. For the other half, they'll be asked their sex after the exam. I will then compare the groups on their accuracy, how many of they are correct. Um, so this seems to be the method section. We're going to have equal number of men and women. They're all going to take a moderately challenging math test. Um, uh, half of them identify their sex beforehand, half after, and then I'm going to look at how they did on the test. This is the method section. Ideally, all of you reading this can have a general idea of how to do the exact same experiment just based on what was read. Um, uh, and then I predict the results will look like the graph below, which are consistent with my hypothesis. So we can look at this graph. There's another video on how to make these kind of graphs. We can see that along the y-axis, which is labeled, it says percent correct. The x-axis, which is labeled as sex salience, whether it was before or after. And the bars are different colors, indicating whether or not they're men or women. This hypothesis actually doesn't have a concluding statement. The concluding statement would say something perhaps like, um, this is important because with this understanding uh, of how the salience of sex affects performance on math and science uh, abilities, um, 
we can better understand differences uh, in sex in the classroom or something like that. Um, so this is the basics of how you do the 300 word hypothesis assignment. You'll notice that this hypothesis assignment is actually only 190 words. Um, and so it's easy to do this in only 300 words.